The groundwork staff, the teams, the smart home visit staff will call them up, book the visit, and they'll be there hopefully within a couple of days to try and fix that leaky loo. While they're there, they're also trying to capture the information that will also contribute to the wider uh, leaky loo agenda. Lovely term, isn't it? It's cool. Um, but what's being, you know, what's the cause? Uh, what type of toilet is it? You know, where are the problems? How do we fix it? What's been fixed? So they'll capture that information. And at the moment, from the 17 odd thousand households we've been in, the 5% is holding true. We're currently at that. that, that and those 17 odd thousand households, they are metered households only. So we will be interesting to see, um, as of next week, going forward over the next few months, when we transfer metered households over to newly metered, previously unmetered households, if that leaky loo number changes. And what we're going to do too is we're going to hold a little bit of time, not much, a little bit of time between when the smart meter goes in and captures some information and before we then do the in-home water efficiency intervention to see if there's a little bit of before and after as well. Okay, some customer feedback. I'll, you can read it later on. We're running short of time, but it's all good. We love it. <laughs> um, doing lots of stuff on schools too. We've already, all, all water companies do schools programs. We've, what we've done is we've transferred the location of these schools programs and this year we're going to do, we're in the process of recruiting another 80, we're going to do them in the five boroughs that we did in the smart meter program. So it's in, so the water efficiency message is embedded in the schools, in the streets, in the homes, all together. It just provides a bit of consistency for us. Okay, uh, case study. Totally different from what you've just seen. We also wanted to um, practice a little bit better the stuff that we've been preaching for a long time. So we're in the process, we've just finished a trial with Propello and Systemizer and we've fitted out stuff in our own building in, in Clearwater Court in Reading, just across the road from the train station. So we just put in, we had, we, we monitored two bathrooms, a men's bathroom, a ladies bathroom. We monitored every single inflow, hot and cold water and even footfall. We knew how many people were going in to use the bathroom. So we know how many people who weren't washing their hands. <laughs> Bit creepy, but... <laughs> Actually, it's really creepy. <laughs> uh, we put in systemizer sensor taps and new sensors on the men's urinals, and we put in the propylair WCs. Our bathrooms before were reasonably efficient. We had dual flush, we already had push button and concussion taps, and we had sensors on the urinals that probably weren't set perfectly. So we weren't too bad, we weren't best practice, but we certainly weren't worst practice. Basic numbers from that. Combine the whole thing across, we've reduced water consumption by 83%. Staff acceptance is great, everyone's using it. In fact, more people are using those bathrooms now than before. Possibly also a little bit creepy. But, um, so the middle blue bars are our previous, our pre refurb reasonably water efficient bathroom. The large bar there is our projected what an old bathroom was. So non-dual flush, classic 9 litre um, siphon lever handle flushes. and slightly higher on taps and urinals, but that's where we are at the moment. And we're holding at that too. And those numbers are normalized to the pop to the usage rates before the refurb. So 83%. Now um, we're going to keep practicing what we're preaching. We're going to roll this out across all of our infrastructure. So all the, the office-based infrastructure. That's where it's going to go. So we're really thrilled about that. Okay, we're doing loads more on engagement. Um, engagement is education. But it's also that idea, engaging more to educate more, but also engaging more to take up those offers, those propositions, the smarter home visits, the leaky loo fixes. We've offered it to every household in Reading, uh, sorry, in, uh, in Oxford. We'll be doing the same soon in, in Newbury and also working large with um, sort of corporate partners who have all their staff working there. So we've done loads more engagement. We're just trying to get that message out there as frequent as possible, more, 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 more. The idea of running sort of short-term campaigns or trying to not get it out, but use that to un underpin just constant communication. So we're trying to change behaviours and education and long-term awareness. We're not going to do that through a four or six week campaign. It's got to be ongoing, all non-stop. So social media, yes, we're even using social media. That's quite a challenge, but I think we've conquered that and we're on our way. And lots of stuff on radio, um, schools program you're in. Okay, last one. I know people have been asking about this thing. We've been working, we worked with LSX, London Sustainability Exchange, and UCL to do a faith and cultural water use study. So we're get, if, if we're going to be rolling out to smart meters across London, our demographics, the ethnic breakdown of our population is quite diverse. 
we're going to be in boroughs where 30, 40 more percent of the residents there are not English. And their water use is going to be different. It's going to be influenced by where they're from, what their grandparents, what their parents did, based on cultural water use or faith requirements for water use. So this work here, um, it's the basic breakdown of demographics in London, and this work that uh, LSX and UCL did with us worked on these particular um, faith groups, worked with focus groups, also desktop lit review research to find out what, do, what does their faith requirement say or, or need to use for water on a daily use, whether it's ablution before prayer, but also touch on in the home. Where are they using water that's different from what you and I might see in our standard literature as what we consider average water use? And the big difference, two of them, one, water use before prayer uh, for Muslim communities and also water use in the kitchen for Hindu, Sikh and Muslim communities. Washing food, rinsing food is quite a lot higher than what we consider as average. So the aims of the research there, I'm not going to go in detail, but we want to get a better understanding of what is out there, what our audience is doing and needing water, so we can then shape our future messages as we roll smart meters across, as we increase engagement, door to door or in literature but the key thing there is also to work with the leaders of that community don't try and do this by yourself so we are just starting on this journey we have a lot more to learn a lot more to implement but this is going to we're in the process we're trying to make this a little bit more core business than what we do because the worry is we invest greatly in smart meters we do a great deal of standard type of engagement we do have a lot of offers but a huge majority a huge percentage of our audience our customers out there are not going to take it up because it's not fit for purpose and we don't want that. So there are a couple of key recommendations there that are basically design your stuff to suit your audience. We're still working on that. Work with the key partners because typically those leaders of the community, leaders of a faith group, leaders of um, uh, cultural groups in the area, they are more trusted by their populations than a utility provider and they'll be listened to more. Thanks. Absolutely brilliant. Um, well, we are running short of time. Oh, we'll sit down. <laughs> sit down. Okay. No, no. Are there any very quick questions? Uh, we've probably got time for a couple. I think we could probably spend another half a day on this. But, uh, okay. Yeah. I have a quick Absolutely. question from Andrew, and it sounds like it's a really good interesting and worthwhile program. Um, question is, um, your home visits, are you actually extending those to customers who aren't having meters as well? I know you're doing it for the focusing on the meter customers, but is there a value in doing, trying to hit the folk that aren't going to be metered in, you know, the unmeterable properties or whatever? Uh, yes, there is. Um, it just comes down to a thing of budget. Yeah. The sheer scale of this is absolutely massive. Although we are offering those in new green boxes. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. 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 So the areas, the outside of the, uh, the London area where we are doing this thing at the moment, it's in Oxford and Newbury. Yeah, yeah it covers everyone because yeah. uh, it's it's nice to do it on, on a just take care of a, a town and a village and a city and that sort of scale. For London, it's we are trying to link it up because it's a commitment we made in the business plan to offer additional water um, saving initiatives to the households that get a new meter. Right. And the other thing is, how you've mentioned long term, you know, long term messaging. Mm. How long is your long term? And I think that's absolutely right. It's fine doing it in the short term. We probably need to carry on, sort of, Yeah, the idea is, is not right? to stop. Yeah. So we'll be hope, and the idea is to embed this as core business all when we're retired and living somewhere else. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. <laughs> and will you be able to make the data available as it comes <laughs> through? Uh, that's a really good one. Um, I don't have an answer to that one yet, Jim. We're, we're still trying to get to um, come to terms with capture, usage, analysis, and um, outside of Thames usage of the information that's going to come back through smart metering because it's going to fundamentally change the sheer, the volume, the complexity of the information we're going to get back every single day. Yeah. So we're, we're to work in progress. Yeah, but we have, we have for the households we did smarter home visits uh, last year, which is about, oh, we did about 14 or 15,000 households, but of that there's a data set of about 10,000 households that we've given to the right people inside Thames. Yeah absolutely not going to be me who's going to do that data analysis um, <laughs> for, for so many reasons um, is that uh, we've given them that and that's a classic before and after so we knew their pre-consumption yeah. 
uh, its AMR information on that particular chunk. So we've now, we're now analysing the before and after of what a smart home visit has done. <coughs> Early indications on a slightly smaller chunk of about 1,100 households of, of about 4,000 that got a new meter. Um, it's very much in line with the savings that Rob pointed out before. Yeah. Um, so we're hopefully on track. But also with the households we're going forward who have never had a meter before but now getting a smart meter, mm -hmm. they're previously unmetered households. We know their PCC is considerably higher. Their household usage is higher than what we've got on for metered households. So the opportunity to save more exists better there. And lastly, I just want to finish on, I really like Rob's slide there that had all the listed um, projects um, and then the, um, the medians with the confidence margins there because I just thought they looked like Star Wars TIE fighters. So I got <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, okay, and then last but absolutely not least is uh, Doug and Hilda to talk about the um, sharing behaviours. Well, still good morning everybody. Um, last uh, last presentation of the morning and I'm, for those who don't know, I'm Doug Clark. I'm Growth and Water Efficiency Manager for Seven Trends um, and I also chair the, uh, the Collaborative Fund. So it's after, as, uh, as Jane said, from 2012 when we first started looking at uh, trying to set up a Collaborative Fund to actually be in here presenting. There's been uh, quite a battle but uh, we've got there in the end. Um, this final uh, project that I'm going to talk about now is actually one that we, uh, Seven Trent, we, we led the project along with uh, Unilever, Wessex Water, Essex and Suffolk Water and also Michelle as the, uh, one of the delivery partners on this and it's looking at the monitoring and, uh, and impact of showering behaviour and interventions on showering and uh, really the background of why we wanted to do this project is showering has been seen as, as one of the big growing areas of water use within the home, um, increasingly important as a target for water companies in terms of actually one of the areas we want to address. However, data on showering behaviour is fairly limited and uh, that's mainly because it's quite a private behaviour, we don't tend to have people in there watching you shower um, and, uh, and also most of the reporting that we have on, on sharing behaviours is also self-reported data. We don't tend to have monitoring in place that actually records shower use or, or shower events and therefore has all sorts of issues in terms of the drawbacks of people assessing how long they spent in the shower, how frequently they shower, etc. Um, and more so on top of that, we really have very limited information on the impact of behaviour change interventions when it comes to showering. So if you, if you give shower timers, if you give shower devices, what happens when you put these within a home? We don't really have a great deal of, uh, of data on that. So that was the real key reasons behind wanting to, uh, to do this study. So all of the research aims. We really wanted to use technology to actually define and refine the evidence base around showering, understand exactly what water use currently is, and what the imp impacts of interventions may be if we, if we do it, implement them within showers. And really it was about testing what are potential scalable interventions as well, because there's all sorts of things that may be done, but actually we needed something that we could deliver on a big scale and roll out after the trial, should it be successful. But we also wanted to understand what are some of the factors that actually influence people's showers, shower time? What makes people shower for longer? what makes people shower shorter, and what are, the, what are those influencing factors. So how did we go about it? We actually used little sensors and monitors within the shower, um, 
they did look a little bit like a, a small camera if, uh, if, if people, uh, people looked at them. So actually the, uh, the image you've got on there shows the actual, the actual sensor. For the trial itself we actually put them in little small white cases um, so you couldn't see any of the electronics and people didn't think they were being 